Hi, I'm Pat. Welcome to Passion of the Geeks Unplugged. Usually Greg and I talk about geek and pop culture and everything else we enjoy. But sometimes there are things that only one of us is an expert in. This is what Passion of the Geeks Unplugged is for. Shorter, unedited, straight to the point, unplugged. So, let's not lose any time. This week I want to continue my short exploration of Diamond in the Rough graphic adventure games with The Colonel's Bequest, a Laura Bow mystery. Released in 1989 by Sierra Online for MS-DOS along five other adventures, making it at least the 25th adventure by Sierra, uh, but more likely number 30. And then in 1990, it was also released for Amiga and Atari ST. The game takes place during the 1920s on a decaying sugar plantation called Misty Acres, where our main protagonist, Laura Bow, arrives with her friend Lillian to spend the weekend there. For Laura, this is just a trip with her friend, but for Lillian, this is a family reunion in her Uncle Henry's old mansion. During dinner, Colonel Henry Dijon has an announcement to make. Upon his death, every person at the table, <laughs> excluding Laura, of course, but including his physician and his maid, will get an equal share of his sizable wealth. Which means his fortune will be split between nine people. Yeah, and <laughs> every Agatha Christie fan will now know what will happen next. One of the guests tries to increase his or her share by eliminating the competition. Or is there even more than one culprit? The Colonel's Bequest is a graphic adventure written by Roberta Williams with a text input parser where you type in the commands like a open suitcase, take notebook or simply look to get a description of the room you're currently in. But unlike most other Sierra parser games at the time, this version of Sierra's SCI engine had already implemented the option of simply right-clicking on items to examine them, saving the player hundreds <laughs> or even thousands of look-at commands. A couple of other Sierra games like um, Quest for Glory or Codename Iceman also used that really handy feature at that time. And all of this was presented in glorious 16-color EGA graphics. But Sierra used a very distinct way of dithering to get more colors than that, which worked especially well on an old blurry EGA monitor or a TV set. An effect which can be recreated if you play the game with ScanVM and activate the undithering option. But no matter if you are a purist who enjoys the pixelized dithering as a form of art, or you want the graphics closer to what they would have looked like 30 years ago. Uh, oh God, I hardly feel old. <laughs> well, the graphics look spectacular, if you consider there are only 16 colors. The way the artist used shadows, highlights... They create some of the best backgrounds ever seen in an EGA adventure game. And they bring the game's locations to an eerie life. Laura can't leave Misty Acres. She is stuck there for the weekend while one guest after another gets murdered. And Laura has to be careful so that she will not be next. The old plantation is dangerous. Death lurks everywhere. Yeah, it's a Sierra game and dying, or <laughs> rather preventing your own death, is part of the game. There are dozens of ways for Laura to kick the bucket. So <laughs> saving your game frequently is highly recommended. But dying is also part of the fun. <laughs> Let me explain. Because you are in danger and because you can't escape Misty Acres... The stakes are much higher for you. 
And while the manor and surrounding plantation grounds offer enough exploration possibilities, there is a well-made claustrophobic element involved. You are pretty much imprisoned with one or even more murderers. Don't fret, deaths are avoidable if you are careful and attentive and, as I said, they improve the game and make it more thrilling. As the clock advances, you learn more and more about the different characters by investigating possible clues and spying on them through different secret passages in the manor, and, of course, by questioning your suspects and or possible witnesses. At least as long as they are alive. Because, as I said, the later it gets, the fewer guests are still alive. Oh, yeah... We have to talk about time progression in The Colonel's Big Quest. Even though at first glance it looks like a time-based game, as the clock chimes every quarter of an hour, it actually isn't. Well, not real time at least. Bear with me, there's a slightly complex mechanic at work here. Every full hour, the game has four, uh, let's call them, story beats that you can trigger in any order for the clock to advance. And only after you have triggered all four of them, a new hour begins and the game world changes. So you cannot miss any of these main story beats, but you can solve or experience them in a less complete way. Say you enter the colonel's room and you catch him with his French mate Fifi, half past eight in a, let's say, compromising situation. You clearly get the gist of what is going on there, but you don't get the full story. Now you know that the Colonel and Fifi do uh, something during the eighth hour in this room. So next time you play the game, or if you reload your game, you make sure you spy through a peephole into the Colonel's room to get their full dialogue. And as a plus, they don't know you saw them. Even though sometimes making the characters aware that you know something is part of the investigation. And this is what makes the game even more fun. The Colonel's Bequest is designed to be played multiple times. You, as the player, not only exploring the premises, but also exploring the characters, asking them things you couldn't in your previous playthrough, confronting them with evidence you didn't have, and so on. This is also why having the parser allowing you to do everything and not relying on some kind of multiple choice system is absolutely brilliant. It's like being Bill Murray in Groundhog Day or Tom Cruise in Edge of Tomorrow. For this reason, the game originally included a notebook an empty one, for you to take notes. And this note-taking is vital to complete the game and, I think, makes the game all the more enjoyable. Because getting through the game is not hard. Solving everything, however, is quite an achievement. And a very fun one. Just to be clear here, in this game, the player, as Laura Bow, is not really the protagonist of the story. Laura is more of an observer, She is the audience surrogate with some interaction possibilities. It is not just a matter of style why parts of the game are set up like a stage play. There are almost no real puzzles in the main plot. Well, there are some smaller almost puzzles, but you can get through the game without much traditional puzzle solving. There is, however, a subplot or side plot about an old war treasure hidden somewhere on the plantation which scratches that classic adventure puzzle edge just a bit. Then again, if you want a traditional point-and-click adventure, you are probably better off playing something else. But if you are in the mood for a fantastic mystery with great graphics (coughs) for its time and a really great music score, a game that constantly challenges you without getting unfair and does something special I highly suggest giving the Laura Bow Mystery a try. It is available on GOG.com. 
So, this is it for this week. If you like Passion of the Geeks, a rating or a subscription in your favorite podcatcher would be awesome. We're on all major podcasting services and on www.passionofthegeeks.com and on YouTube. You can send questions and suggestions to passionofthegeeks at gmail.com and you can find us on Twitter at passionotgeeks. So thank you for listening and take care.